It's 7.39, you're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Ellie now. Have a look at this, because this is quite a picture. Yeah. It may take you back 30-odd years. It shows a 90-year-old woman in Kenya shielding her hungry great-grandson. It's gripped by the worst drought since the 1984 famine that sparked Live Aid. It is just horrific. It's horrific. Mm, really, really is such a harrowing image on the front page there. Mm. Got it here, haven't we? Yeah. There's also a picture of a baby, a 14-month-old baby, I think it was, weighing just 11 pounds. So really striking Absolutely pictures on the front horrific. of the mirror. Um, something totally different now. Another picture story, though, is page three of the Daily Mail. We can see the Princess of Wales showing off her abseiling skills. Prince William and Kate joined a Welsh mountain rescue team yesterday, celebrating their 60th anniversary. And as our royal yeah, Wilson reporter... Wilson Kate. Wilson Kate. They're looking good for 60 years together, aren't they? I think it's the Welsh... <laughs> oh, I see. ...service, um, whatever it was, um, celebrating 60 years. But they did look great, Wilson Kate. Lots of smiles, wonderful pictures. Uh, here's someone you've probably never, ever heard of. Well, I haven't. Maybe it's just me. Sofia Linares. It's a great picture, though. Uh, this is in The Guardian, actually. She is one of the stars of Black Sabbath The Ballet, which opens at the Birmingham Hippodrome in September. The world's first heavy metal dance experience. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Had it here first. And the Times. Well. <laughs> the Times has got another great picture story. This is on page five. It's the key people with historic and important roles in the King's coronation. Your friend, Baroness Benjamin, is one of them. Oh, yes. Yes. And the papers say that the coronation will be a beacon of inclusion of diversity. Yeah, well, she's not... I wish I could say she was my friend. She's very nice. I'm sure she loved you just as much as you loved her when it's you just, met. It's, it's the, just the connection with it's that connect childhood connection it's i love the fact remarkable. that she made you all shy and nervous oh yeah she's a childlike i was the child. same when i met michael flatley you know yeah yeah bumped him to, into him in a hotel in west london and i just turned into a fumbling mess yeah. <laughs> it's that funny was, isn't it how people people do things often like happens when i see benjamin butterworth you know yeah. from the eye newspaper <laughs> fumbling mess and also broadcaster liz kershaw who are both here warning to you when you said you, when you said you've probably never heard of this person i thought that was my introduction oh, yeah, no, 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 true. never <laughs> true never. What, what are we starting with i haven't got a list right here it is uh so let's we're talking about the king's coronation liz this is in the telegraph it's going to be brimmed with diversity. Yeah, um, that's great, of course. I mean, imagine 1953 when the last monarch was crowned. Mm. And if you were able, sort of middle class in a semi in the suburbs, perhaps to afford a TV, tiny telly, black and white. My and granddad op- built one. Ooh. <laughs> he built it out of gravel. He did build it. He <laughs> built a TV for the coronation, yeah. Aww. And did all the neighbours come round? Yeah, that's, that's all the neighbours. Yeah. Well, we Auntie Kathleen had a pub and she was able to afford to buy one. And, you know, everybody came and sat and watched it. But other than that, if you weren't a member of government or the aristocracy or a foreign representative diplo- diplomat, you'd no chance of being at the actual ceremony. So it's great that it's more diverse. I mean, it, it says, you know, that I've seen the old film of it. The, the majority of people in Westminster Abbey that day were posh white men because they were peers of the realm, etc. So Prince Charles is trying to spread it out from the aristocracy and everything else. And it says it will very much focus on diversity of gender and race and um poster girl for that is your mate Fluella, Fluella lovely woman something. and been a member of the house of lords for many years now yeah um and of course there'll be hopefully but half the population is female plenty of women there well there should be mm. i don't think it, it, it definitely doesn't mention i suspect it doesn't include class diversity so if you're a working bloke from well, Wigan or, you know, a young girl from Rochdale, uh, working class, you know, there's not, there's not going to be anybody like that in the, the Abbey, is there? Well, it's, so it's not no. totally diverse. It's not all you, encompassing. You, you've got to have the right connections. Like, I mean, Fluella's, you know, from her background. Yeah, yeah. Over to this country and all the rest of it. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a diversity in that sense. Yes, I agree. But as far as... I'm concerned, and I've said it before. You're not going to invite Phyllis from Scunthorpe, are you, to... 
Well, why not? Well, how would you choose? Well, you could have a representative. I think there are going to be people who do um, oh, yeah. charitable acts and, yeah. and work I in the community. It, it, I, just, I just finished. I, I just think I'll not shut up. The, 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 I've said before, as long as you've got a monarch, and I understand the great good they do for our image, soft power, tourist trade influence and our stable form of government but as long as you've got a monarch a royalty you've got an aristocracy by by favor yeah. and as long as you've got an aristocracy you're still going to have a rigid packing order and class system and i've experienced it firsthand i've mixed and and you know it's like Oh, are you a northerner? Yeah, but you're common as Motley's. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's, but well, that's, that, I wouldn't be considered that just because of the way I speak if no. we weren't living in such a rigidly class-ridden society. There is a very anti-northern society. This just represents, I mean, so if you couldn't, anyway, let's, let, 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 let's have black, have let's, have, let's have black people, let's have other ethnicities, fine, great, represent this country. But yeah, let's have a few talk of northerners as well, well including Benjamin. I, I am actually from, from Manchester and Cheshire. So oh, I am yeah. a northerner, but I think I think the ac accent escapes me. But what I was going to say is, I think I, I'm pretty certain there are 2,000 people will be in the Abbey for this, which is a quarter of the last coronation, and 1,200 of them will be from organisations and yeah. charities rather than you know the the upper echelons of society, the specific post holders of governments and uh, you know aristocratic families. And so you would imagine a lot of those 1,200 are going to be pretty ordinary folk from who've done good things around the country. Well, let's hope so. And that's a massive proportion of the number of people who will be at the coronation. And so, to me, that says that they're quite aware that they need to feel like the country. You know, that word diversity on the front of the telegraph, I think a lot of people hear that word and are a bit turned off by it these days. But what it really means is, is trying to make it look like the country. Well, 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 let's, let's rattle on with okay, the okay. only got about 30 seconds. Oh. Uh, um, one story. Um, yeah, ben, you, oh, we can talk, Liz. Um, let's have a look at the eye. Um, and Richard Sharp. So Richard Benjamin. Sharp, chairman of the BBC, it was claimed... And he admitted to part of it that he helped facilitate an £800,000 loan for Boris Johnson just before he was appointed chairman. Mm. Well, the report on what happened really comes out today. And so there's already a brief of this in the Daily Telegraph that apparently it's damning. Uh, it doesn't look good. It finds that he breached the protocol. And so I think we may see today that the chairman of the BBC, Richard Sharp, has to resign. Mm. Mm -hmm. I applied. You see, there I am. I've got yeah. I've no chance even though I've got 35 years experience, no chance of ever being in a position like that. You know, well, you can't because even Alexa doesn't understand you. Well, are we doing that now? Yeah. Right, well, Alexa's too posh, it's official, and um, it, it, there are, uh, you know, moves to, to make it um, more tolerant of different accents. Right. And we've had first-hand experience of this, haven't we? Because you got your new car and you were requesting, I said, let's put some music on, Stephen, and you never listen to music. And they, no. Okay, so you said something like, Alexa, play Simply Red, or something like, something like that. <laughs> and then I said, can I have a go after a few? Yeah, go on. And said, Alexa, please play. And it refused, didn't it? It well, just didn't recognise. Yeah. Well, it's happened to me at. Um, so I put a posh voice on, and then she didn't well, request. Yeah. But also, Westminster parking meters. I stood there, and I'd been lent this posh Range Rover, and it had all vowels in it, and it said, it said registration number, and I was trying to voice it, and uh, it just, it just wouldn't take me on. So in the end, I thought, wrong. Oh, we'd have to use my elocution lessons from Rochelle Convent. So I said. Registration number A E I O U. Well, everyone, and I couldn't let me go. What I love is that there's just been a national test of whether Alexa recognises your yeah. accent because you just said it out loud on the telly. So everyone's Alexa's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yes, yeah, apologies. Sorry about that. that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Does happen? Um, no, it won't because it won't listen to me. No, no, that's true. <laughs> um, just very quickly, um, what's this in the eye about wigs and gardens? So, I mean, this is brilliant. So, in Allerton in West Yorkshire, it's been flooded basically because I was going to say two women. Who knows? Two people uh, put their wigs uh, down. They tried to flush their wigs away, and it blocked the drainage for the area. And gardens have been completely flooded, covered in sewage. So, don't put your wigs down How the. Has anyone flushed? 
extra week. I mean, that is what the local water authority said. It's a valid question. Um, and so they said they've, they've had lots of things over the years blocking, but never a wig uh, managing it. And um, I don't know whether it was you, Stephen, but they haven't claimed the wigs back yet. So, no, it's well, not me. No, if, mine's all genuine. If you want uh, I, might, back. I might have had it rearranged, <laughs> but it's all genuine. Honestly, the things they must see. Um, now, our next guest has dropped out. OK. So we're having technical issues. Well, I... I the worst, so, so we'll keep you lot talking. So the worst right. defender for drains is wet wipes and they're now trying to ban them. Wet wipes. And um, my drains... <laughs> They just, they, they, they just, it all came up, it was, it was, mm. it was soapy water and it all poured out of the toilet. Oh. Uh, so I knew that I just had a shower upstairs so and they I... couldn't go down the drain so it came up the downstairs toilet and the man came round and he said he took two full bin liners, big black bin liners of wet wipes yeah. out of the toilet. Why would you do that? Why would you I don't them? know, oh. I don't know. Those supposedly flushable wipes and aren't really flushable. No. I'd, I'd, when I moved into that house, yeah. um, when there was a blockage not long after, and they, all the sewage people came out and does it. And it was nappies. Mm. You just oh, wouldn't do it. Why are you flushing nappies? And the other one, you know, I live up a dead end lane. Yeah. Well, they got, got blocked in the main pipe. Um, it's, they, they took it out. They said it was a mesh of plastic earbuds. Oh. Just formed of, like... A fence across the drain. Someone's been. Do you want any more stories about plumbing? No, <laughs> I'll tell you what annoys me with that. If it's if it's the main sewer in the street, mm. they will come out and sort it. But if it's one where it crosses into your property, then it's up to you. You've got to pay for it. And if mm. your neighbours have blocked it up the road, but if it blocks in you know under your house or you know front of your front door or whatever, you've got to get them out. It costs yeah. you money. And I mean these two weeks they blocked people. They didn't just block the, the drains. They covered two people's gardens in sewage. I mean, oh. you know, for the sake of just sticking it in the bin, it really shouldn't be that hard. You know, no. people should really be able should. to do that. We wouldn't think I it'd be think. rocket science, would you? No. But yeah, uh, the uh, the water authorities have said to people, uh, if it's not the natural, you know, the obvious things to use the loo for, don't put it down the loo. Well, I've got a sign up now saying... No wigs. Paper. <laughs> three Ps, I won't say them, but the first oh. one's paper. Yeah. And that's That's what that's I was avoiding, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Lo oh, lovely. lovely. <laughs> um, can we uh, have a look at cars? You mentioned cars. Yeah, I love a car. Oh, yeah, so that, this is great news. Um, car makers in the UK, uh, the Motor Manufacturing Association, have been able to tell us that the number of cars built in the first three months of this year rose by 6%. Um, and the only thing holding it back from pre-COVID levels is the lack of semiconductors and chips. Oh, yeah. So it's this, the demand, for example, um, Land Rover vehicles is enormous, but if you try and order one, it's an eight-month lead time, Ooh. and you can only have certain um, things because they and they put in the priority on chips in the more expensive models, mm -hmm. like footballers buy, and if you want a lower end one, you have to wait even longer, and that restricts it. But the interesting thing is. This is going to delight Brexiteers. Um, do you remember when we were discussing should we leave the EU and everybody was saying, oh, we won't be able to sell our goods into Europe, you know, it's our biggest market and we're going to suffer. Well, two-thirds of the cars we exported for the first time went to the European Union, two-thirds. Yeah. So that what that's that's encouraging, isn't it? Yeah, what do you think? Are you encouraged by that, Benjamin? I, well, I mean, you're, you're saying that to, to be troll, I think, because you're suggesting yeah. that I wouldn't be happy about it because I voted Remain. I worked on the yes, Remain. Yes, I was campaign. suggesting that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, you know, Brexit happened, so, you know, it's all of our, you know, finances and economy, right? So, yes, of course, I'm, I'm glad of it. But, I mean, the truth is that, you know, while this might be good for cars, overall exports are quite considerably behind where they should be, and that is a massive problem. I mean, many billions of pounds less than was expected. What, to Europe? Yeah, and also more generally, because I think some companies have even gone under because of the red tape when they were heavily reliant on, on right. EU trade. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, that's the kind of thing that needs to be sorted out. And I think in one of the papers today, there was going to be this bonfire of EU legislation to get rid of everything by the end of this year, and Kemi Badenoch, the Trade Secretary, so this is her part, she said that that's not going to happen anymore. They're not going to get rid of oh. our EU legislation. That's what's being reported in some papers. Oh, that's oh. interesting. Can I give you another example of trade with Europe that everybody was like, oh my God, the world's going to end. 
um, bands, music. Oh, yeah. And um, they said, oh, we're not going to be able to tour Europe anymore because we can't have free movement. And then every time we cross a border with one of our trucks and equipment, we're going to have to fill in forms. Well, uh, there's loads of bands I know that are only exclusively touring in Europe this year. Yeah. And there are loads of uh, European bands who... Um, are in the U to come into the UK yeah, so well, that doesn't good. seem to have happened either no it doesn't it doesn't I don't know, I'm sure you'll have thoughts on that gbviews at gbnews.uk um, up next and we'll talk about more strike action first though is your weather